The first thing we're going to do for our hearty chicken and gravy over rice is go ahead and prepare the chicken, of course. So all I did was spray the chicken down, sorry, spray the skillet down with a little bit of nonstick spray. And then I put a little seasoning on that. And because I want to have a little spice to it, I'm just using the regular Slap Your Mama Cajun seasoning just for a little bit of spice. So we're going to go ahead, let those cook through. You can use, I, mean, I actually have chicken tenderloin. You can actually use um, chicken thighs if you would like. I don't think this is going to be enough chicken um, for as, you know, how thick I want it to be. So I'm also going to use some chicken thighs that I found in the freezer. So those have thawed out. So we're going to go ahead and finish with the chicken tenderloin here. Let it completely cook through. Um, do the same thing for the chicken thighs and then we're going to pretty much chop it up, pull it apart or however you want to do it. Finishing up the prep for my hearty chicken and gravy over rice. I have, first of all, have you ever heard of the Holy Trinity? This is pretty much the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity, if you don't know, is bell pepper, onion, and celery. I have my celery in red bell pepper here because I like the color of it when I make it and I'm gonna go ahead and cut up my onion now but if you ever heard of and there's another name um, I actually told you on one of my other videos I can't even think of it right now but I think I like Holy Trinity better and you don't have to cut it so small So this is my onion, and I think I want some more onion. And also just for a little bit of extra flavor, not so much for heat, but just for flavor, I'm actually going to cut up two jalapeno peppers. And what I've done with these is actually took the seeds out. I just got two of them that I've cut up, took the seeds out of them, washed them off. Um, you really should work with, handle these with gloves on. Um, I'm just going to have to continue to wash my hands, but I'll make sure not to touch my eyes, of course. So I'm going to slice these guys up, slice the onion up. I have baby carrots. Um, okay, just so you know the, the background of this chicken and gravy that I'm actually making. Years ago in Memphis, I went to Popeye's. And they had, I guess you know how some restaurants have a, <coughs> excuse me, some restaurants have a, um, I don't know, a seasonal dish or, uh, I don't know. But anyway, they had chicken and gravy. And as I always do when I go out to eat, if I like it, I try to get every flavor I can from it. So that I can recreate it and I did it with this and when I tell you I had it exactly the way it, it, it tasted when they had it and the reason I had to recreate it also was because for some reason they stopped carrying it I don't know I don't know why they why they stopped doing it maybe it wasn't a big seller I don't know but ever since then I've been making this and it's always a hit. You can do it over mashed potatoes. You can do it over noodles. I think I've actually done it with noodles before. But my favorite is over rice. Because who doesn't eat chicken and gravy over rice, right? My husband said he's not a fan of the shredded chicken or the chopped up chicken pretty much. So we're going to do him a few legs. It's going to be in the same gravy. He wants legs, so we're going to give him legs. Now, with the jalapeno pepper, it may look like a lot, but since we've taken the seeds out, which is what pretty much holds in all the heat, it, it won't have much heat to it at all, if any. Honestly, I can never really taste any of the heat once you've taken the seeds out. But it does have a nice flavor, even when I do my... Um, my stuffed jalapenos wrapped in bacon. If you get the seeds out good enough, you're good to go. You won't have a problem. If I get a little bit of heat, I won't be mad either. 
but only a little because I can't take heat. I really can't. You can ask my brother. He doesn't do heat very well either. We're not good with heat. So, I think I pretty much got enough of that in there in this bowl. Let me go ahead and heat my, you know what, let me figure out what I'm going to do with these. That's the first thing I want to do. Now you probably see I'm missing the nail. Never mind that. <laughs> so, um, I could either chop these or I could put them in the fruit, food processor. My fear of putting these in the food processor is that they're going to get too small. And again, that's just more dishes to wash. If you notice, I'm actually doing my peach cobbler in a full pan today. Yeah, not, not messing up too many dishes today. But I think I'm just going to do a quick chop on these. Matter of fact, I know. I'm going to do a quick chop on these and add these also. So anyway, let me get everything added. We got the Holy Trinity plus one. <laughs> so that's the Holy Trinity plus the jalapeno peppers. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start softening these guys up. All right, if you've been keeping up, you might remember <laughs> this pot. Um, I actually used my blender in this pot, so you can see where it's got the lines all around it. <laughs> I won't do that again. I learned my lesson. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put my red bell pepper, my celery. <clears throat> um, what else I got? Onion, jalapeno pepper, and I went ahead and cut up my carrots a little bit now if you see the colors that are going on in here this is just an indication of the colors that you'll have sorry about that that you'll have in the gravy in addition to the chicken okay so we're just gonna let that cook down once that cooks down we're gonna this is a weekday meal so I'm not gonna make the gravy portion myself but I did find that the Heinz uh, chicken gravy works just fine if you want to make your own gravy fine um, the first few times I made it I made my own gravy the Heinz chicken gravy <clears throat> does really well also so we're just gonna cook this down a little bit let it soften that's all we want to do is Pretty much let it soften when they did their carrots though they had like slivers of carrots like julienne style i think the ones i got in here are pretty good so basically like i said we're going to cook that down um peaches are still getting you know getting soft cooking down um butter's melting in there and we also have the chicken over here working um to finish off the chicken and gravy. And if you notice, this is the boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Okay, boneless, skinless chicken thighs is what I have in here now. I previously did um, chicken tenderloin. Those are ready. So I just need to cut those up. I may even eat one, you never know. But anyway, those are ready. I'm just gonna cut them up and <clears throat> let the chicken thighs go ahead and cook on both sides and we'll you know pour those apart cut them up shred them however you want to do all right so the chicken is ready now and all i'm going to do with this chicken is just cut it up if you see how i i don't know if you can see over at the other chicken it's just i'm just cutting it up i could use those tongues but they get in my way and you don't have to cut it perfectly just cut it good enough big chunks slithers however you want to do but no matter what we're going to go ahead and cut this up and then we'll put it over into the rest of the vegetables <clears throat> and the reason i use um in case you're wondering i just want to make sure you guys know that i have a preference of using chicken tenderloins and uh boneless skinless chicken thigh they're tender um i'm not real big on the dark meat i'm sorry on the white meat i'm sorry it's a little tougher for me or to me you know so 
I just, you know, I use these guys. They're juicy. They're not dry. And they taste better. So, just a little fact. Reason why I choose to use chicken thighs and chicken tenderloin. So, as you can see, the vegetables have cooked down. They've all gotten soft. And they have a gorgeous color. So I'm just going to take all of that chicken. Hopefully not wasting it. And it smells really good. I wish you guys knew how good it smells. Now, in addition to this, and I haven't seasoned it yet. The only seasoning I've done um, is what you saw before was the, um, the Slap Your Mama Cajun seasoning. Like I said, Heinz gravy. Chicken gravy, that is. We're just going to pour that chicken gravy over this. Normally, I would take me a dash of water and put it in there, swish it around, and save me a little money. Actually, I might still do it. So, that's your chicken mixture. I'm going to add, since I only seasoned the meat... I'm going to add a little more slap your mama to it, give it a little bit of heat. I'm going to add onion powder, and a little bit of garlic salt. And of course, pepper. I'm not putting regular salt in here because the slap your mommy and the garlic salt. Um, clearly, that's enough. So, all of that gets mixed in. And once again, it's going to sit and simmer not even 20 30 minutes and i'm gonna get started on my rice pilaf and for my rice pilaf i'm actually using jasmine rice and vermicelli i'm melting a half a stick of butter along with uh, i'm not gonna even tell you how much olive oil just know that i have a half a stick of butter here with a little bit of olive oil it's about the same ratio, I'll tell you that. They're both about the same ratio. Now, and basically what I'm going to do, once this is completely melted, I'm going to add my vermicelli to it. Um, when I add the vermicelli, it's just to get the vermicelli to brown a little. Um, once it starts browning, um, we'll go ahead and add the rice as well as chicken broth. Now, we're gonna use a cup of rice, and if I'm using a cup of rice, you wanna use two cups of chicken broth, okay? So anytime you're making rice, if you wanna get the right measurements, um, and it's pretty much the same thing with uh, grits. You want to add double of what the hard mixture is. So like I said, one cup of rice is going to need two cups of chicken broth. All right, so that's done. Um, this box doesn't have a whole lot, so you know what? That's all is in the box. So guess what? We're going to use this whole box of vermicelli. And you simply brown that. 
you could add the rice now. The rice isn't going to really brown, but you definitely want the vermicelli to go ahead and get brown. So we'll let that finish browning or even start browning. And then we'll start to add our jasmine rice and we'll put the um, chicken broth in here and bring it to a simmer. All right, so we got them good and brown. And now we are going to add the rice. Do two cups of chicken broth. All right, so we're gonna mix these guys together. And I actually did um, two cups of rice. So I'm gonna do four cups of chicken broth. Is that two? I have a have an assistant with me. Two more. Oh, get off of that. There's two. And there's two more cups of chicken broth. There's just a pinch left. It's a pinch left. We'll use that too. All right, so we're just gonna let this come to a boil. When I do my rice, I bring it to a boil real quick, and then I take it back down to a simmer, and I go ahead and just let it simmer on down and cook. So we'll go ahead and let that happen now. And everything should be done here pretty soon. So the chicken gravy and rice pilaf is completed. If you notice, <clears throat> The um, vermicelli has browned perfectly, in my opinion, and you can see the carrots, the onions, um, you can even see the, um, the red bell pepper, um, of course your, your chunks of chicken, um, jalapeno, everything's there. And when I tell you this is good, this is awesome. And we're just going to pair this with croissant rolls. And that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe.